So last but not least is Jake Shearer, and his project is titled Keyframed Anatomy, Developing Anatomical Digital Education Resources for Distance Learning. Um, take it away, Jake. Thank you very much, Dr. Salcedo. <clears throat> uh, my contact information is on this slide, as well as my Twitter handle throughout the entire presentation. Please reach out if you have any questions. Before I begin, I'd like to thank my, uh, everybody on this slide. Uh, this project was uh, conceptualized and executed in direct response to the campus closures from COVID-19. So the, uh, the timeline, it would have been impossible without the help from everybody here. Speaking of timelines, let's briefly review the campus closure timeline. On March 9th, President Mark Kennedy announced that CU has contingency plans for teaching disruptions. On March 11th, Chancellor Elliman announced that CU Anschutz will operate normally, and the Office of Digital Education announced remote training workshops. On the 13th, Chancellor Elliman announced that CU Anschutz will transition to remote learning wherever possible. And on the 16th, Chancellor Elliman announced that all CU Anschutz University buildings will close. So within a week, CU Anschutz went from uh, primarily face-to-face -to, -face to completely distance education. And so this poses a lot of challenges, however, Distance education does have some advantages. Uh, content can be accessed at any time by the students and anywhere. Supplemental learning material becomes essential for course design. And the social distance of being online may encourage participation from introverted students. With these advantages in mind, our project had three goals. First, to develop several sample digital neuroanatomy resources, to integrate and deliver these resources by online formats, and survey the students about their experience with the resources. I developed all these resources and delivered them to the students as part of my responsibilities as, as a student instructor for neuroanatomy. The first resource type I'd like to discuss is 3D models. 3D models can be implemented in several ways. They can be pre-rendered as an image or inserted directly into PowerPoint slides to be dynamically updated within PowerPoint. And this frees the instructor from being limited to the image orientation of stock photos. You, know, you can get these photos from atlases or Google searches, but you're limited to the views that you're provided with. Here's an example of a 3D model that I developed for this uh, project. I used 3D slicer to segment a hemisphere of a brain from an MRI. I put that into a program called Substance Painter, which very easily and intuitively allows the user to paint colors onto different uh, areas of the 3D model. Then I put this into Maya and rendered it into a 2D image to put into a uh, presentation on the auditory system. Here's a slide from that presentation. You can see I have the brain oriented in a specific way. I've highlighted the exact structures that I want to talk about in this, uh, in this uh, slide. And I don't have any extraneous information that I need to cover up because it's exactly how I want. Another resource that I developed were animations. Simple animations can be included into slides, to emphasize points to show relationships, because visualing, visualizing dynamic relationships through motion can be a very powerful educational tool. Now, animations don't need to be fancy or complex to be effective. Here's two more examples from the auditory lecture that I gave. This first animation took me about 20 minutes to make in Maya, and it shows the relationship of changing air pressure over time for amplitude of sound. And due to the school closures, I didn't have access to a tuning fork. So using uh, Photoshop, I made myself a tuning fork and administered a rhyme test to illustrate how it's done. So here's a pipeline for a, a more complex animation that I uh, used in a later implementation. So I took histology slides into Photoshop and uh, extruded them to 3D models, which I put into Maya, organized anatomically, and animated tubes to represent fiber tracks and nuclei. I then put this into After Effects in order to uh, finalize and implement into PowerPoint presentation. The third resource type I'd like to talk about are supplemental materials. Two examples of these are I developed a pre-recorded self-study resource. It was a 10-minute uh, asynchronous lecture on the visual system uploaded for the students to review on their own. And I also uploaded a 3D model to a program called Sketchfab, which allows the hosting and annotation of 3D models. Let's look at the uh, asynchronous video. 
I animated this in Maya to illustrate the pathways of visual information from the retina into the brain. Using After Effects, I was able to annotate the structures and give explanations for the content that I wanted them to know. Here, this is uh, what Sketchfab looks like as a user. Here's a 3D model that I developed. And I have painted on the cortical areas relating to the visual system. And they're annotated, including all of the information that I know. Students were able to access this and review it at their own pace on their own time. Well, we could take it a step further. We can deeply integrate these animations into lectures by combining traditional lecture content, PowerPoint slides, with apps like Poll Everywhere, we can have dynamic audience interaction at a distance. Here's an example. So this is once again from the auditory system lecture. Here's an animation moving through the brainstem slices. I've moved over to Poll Everywhere, where I ask these students to identify different uh, histology. We can see mixed results, and this gives me the opportunity to check the student's understanding and to go over what is correct and incorrect. We move into Power, uh, PowerPoint again, where this is annotated. And finally, we have an animation showing the dynamic relationships of the fiber tracks in the brainstem relating to the auditory system. So what's next? A survey has been admitted to this to as a survey has been administered to the students. It's currently being reviewed. But the survey asks about the students' impressions of the resources and their comfort in participating in a digital environment. Now, the trends so far indicate that generally students who self-report as introverts rate these resources 28% higher than extroverts do. Additionally, introverts score their comfort level in participating in a digital classroom 68% higher than extroverts do. And what makes this particularly interesting is that ex uh, students who self-identify as extroverts rated these resources, uh, generally the lowest score was neutral on a Likert scale. So these resources, uh, these indications point to the value of future iterations of the study. This uh, study was very limited, however, due to the time constraints and due to the campus closures, and this was uh, purely an investigational study. Future directions include a robust comparative study between 2D and 3D representations of anatomy. And I believe that developing robust and powerful distance learning tools is essential for the future of anatomy education. Medical animations allow the instructor to show exactly what they want, how they want, and hybrid courses can be developed to ensure that students have access to high quality education on and off campus. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation, Jay. Um, let's see, we do have some time for questions here, so please feel free to submit them to the chat box. Um, our first question is, uh, would you hypothesize, oops, sorry. Uh, would you hypothesize that learning outcomes would be the same, greater, or poorer compared to face-to-face uh, -face classes? So a hypothesis that I am uh, interested in looking into uh, for future iterations of the study are how the interactiveness and dynamic nature of the resources affects learning outcomes. A lot of these student responses indicated that the more interactive and dynamic resources they found more valuable educationally. And some even in their text responses said that that dynamic nature uh, helps to compensate for the, uh, the lack of face-to-face -face instruction. Thank you. Um, that looks like all the questions and time we have. So thank you, thank you, everyone, for your attention. So we'd just like to remind you that at 10:15 uh, we'll start session two, uh, but I'm going to go ahead uh, and end this session. But thank you, everyone, for joining us for our first session.